Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film. Audition. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young boy excitedly walking in a hospital hallway. He is carrying a gift and a get well soon card for his mother. He hasn't been seeing much of her ever since she got sick. But the boy still believes that she will be alright. What the Dave does not know is that his mother's condition is very serious, and she is already on her deathbed. In the hospital room with her are her doctor and her husband, Haru. The doctor's grim face confirms that her death won't be long now. Soon enough, she closes her eyes and drifts away. The doctor announces her time of death and leaves the room to let Haru grieve in private. He turns and sees his son at the door, curiously looking at his mother's lifeless body. At a young age, the son still can't comprehend that people can die just like that. Haru just looks at his son with sad eyes. The years pass, and the father and son grow closer and help each other in their grief. They live a simple life and are content with just having each other. They go fishing one morning and then cook what they caught for dinner that night. While eating, the son brings up out of the blue the possibility of his father getting remarried. Because it's been years since his mother had died, he thinks it's time for his father to get back into dating. Haru hasn't really thought about being with another woman since his wife's death, so he is a bit surprised by his son's suggestion. The next day, he is leaving the office. His secretary comes up to him and announces that she is getting married soon. He awkwardly tells her congratulations, and she appears to be disappointed in his reaction. At a hotel bar, he meets up with his film producer friend. He tells him that he intends to marry again, having been convinced by his son. But Haru doesn't just want an arranged marriage. He wants to really meet a nice woman with hobbies and maybe even a job. He also adds that he will be picky and choose his ideal woman out of several candidates. This gives the producer the idea to hold a fake audition for a romance film. What the girls will not know is that they are actually auditioning to be Haru's wife. He plans to shoot the whole process and make a documentary out of it. The producer explains that out of the shortlisted girls, they will be able to select a well-mannered and attractive young woman who will fit the bill nicely. It isn't long before lots of young aspiring actresses send their resumes and pictures to audition. Haru flips through all of them, trying to see which one would be a good match. While looking at the papers, he happens to glance at the framed photo of his wife. He feels guilty and turns the photo away. The son then barges inside the room and his father scrambles to hide the women's photos. The boy invites him to eat dinner with him and he bashfully says that he has a female guest coming over. Haru is happy for his son and tells him to give his portion of the dinner to his guest. After the son leaves, he turns his attention back to the Rexumes and clumsily spills a bit of tea on one of them. He pulls it out of the pile and closely looks at the stunning young woman in the picture named Asami. He reads her essay, which profoundly talks about her failed aspirations to be a professional ballet dancer and her thoughts about life and death. The emotional depth in her words persuades Haru to shortlist Asami. Haru later goes out to the living room, where he meets his son's crush. So he walks their dog outside, attempting to give his son some privacy. A week later, he and the producer hold the auditions. Haru states his apprehension at using deceitful methods to find a wife, but they proceed anyway. One by one, the 30 shortlisted girls file in and sit on a chair in the middle of the spacious room. The producer would then begin asking them a series of questions that would range from asking them why they auditioned to personal queries about their sex lives. The girls would also showcase their talents, such as dancing or baton twirling. Some of them are shy, while some of them are extremely confident. One girl even disrobes and stands in front of the two men in a bikini. Haru steps out for a bathroom break, and he sees Asami among the other candidates. Finally, she is called and walks inside in her striking all-white outfit. She promptly answers all of the producer's questions about her recent employment, but Haru is no longer paying attention. He is besotted by her beauty. For the first time, he takes control and asks her about her essay on life and death and her ballet training. It turns out she trained to be a professional ballet dancer, but an injury prevented her from fulfilling her dream. In her writing, she likens not being able to live one's dream to being dead. Haru is impressed by her looks and brains. However, the producer isn't sold that she's the girl they're looking for. She tells them that she works in a record store, making just enough for a comfortable life, but she isn't really ambitious to begin with. Now more sure that he wants Asami, Haru calls her that night and asks to see her again. She readily agrees, and they make plans to meet. A few seconds after their call ends, the producer calls and informs Haru that he tried calling all the job references that Asami supplied in her application form, but none of them answered. One of them has even been missing for a year. Haru dismisses his friend's concerns and still goes ahead with meeting Asami again, eager to have her alone. They meet in another hotel and share a meal together. He asks her about the references she put in her application, and she nervously reveals that all the previous employers she cited are fake. She had been nervous about auditioning without much experience, so she lied to them. 
Haru believes everything she said, and leaves Asami with his calling card with his telephone number. But the producer continues to doubt her, and shares with his friend that he couldn't even reach the current employer she stated in her application. There is no one who knows who Asami is, and this bothers the producer. So he advises Haru to be careful with her, since she is hiding something. Haru promises that he won't call Asami, but she is on his mind from now on. He dreams of his dead wife, and even takes a day off at work, just thinking about Asami. Even his housekeeper starts being concerned about his melancholia. Meanwhile, Asami just sits motionlessly by telephone in her small, threadbare apartment, while waiting for Haru to call her. There is a large cloth sack lying beside the telephone. She does nothing as days pass, and when the phone finally rings, she smiles. The two meet for dinner, and she wears an enormous and luxurious pink fur coat. He asks her about her family's whereabouts, and she replies that her parents are in another province. Haru then asks her about her current job at a certain bar, and she confirms that she is still working there. He alludes that he wants to visit her there, but she says that her boss is nosy and meddles in her private life. Finally, Haru lies to her, and says that the movie she was auditioning for fell through, and they wouldn't be going into production anymore. Asami takes it all in stride, and nervously confesses that she's just happy that she got to meet him, because he is the only person who understands who she really is. The son notices the positive change in his father's demeanor, and is happy that he has found someone. The father confides that he plans on proposing to Asami during their weekend getaway in a seaside hotel. The son gives him his blessing, and his father smiles. After grieving his wife for so long, he is now ready to open his heart again. Before he ends their conversation, he promises to introduce Asami to his son soon. The son half-jokingly says that he will assess if she is the right person for his father once he meets her, since his father is blinded by his feelings. The couple meets as planned, but Asami isn't really talking much during their stay. He jabbers about a nice restaurant they can go to for dinner, but she just wordlessly turns off the lamp in the room and removes her long white dress and underclothes. She then climbs under the bed covers and invites Haru to join her. He obeys, and when he approaches the bed, Asami slowly hikes up the blanket covering her legs and shows him her burned scars. She tells him that she burnt herself when she was little, and she is now showing him everything, even the ugly parts of her, because she wants Haru to know her more. With a shaking voice, she pleads with him to love her and only her. Other men had told her the same thing before, but they didn't really mean it. Without saying anything, he climbs into bed with her, and they make love. Afterward, Haru wakes up to an empty bed and a ringing telephone. He answers it, and hears the hotel receptionist on the other line. He informs Haru that Asami has left the hotel, and he wants to confirm if he will be staying the whole weekend. Haru dejectedly comes home to the city, and tells the producer that Asami has disappeared. He does not know why, and she is not picking up her phone. His friend tells him that his hunch about Asami is right, and he should just forget about her. Haru is obviously heartbroken like a teenager, and he does not want to move on from her, despite the producer belittling his feelings. He is resolved to find Asami, since he believes that there is an explanation behind her mysterious disappearance. He rereads her essay, and notices the name of the ballet studio, where she was trained. Haru goes to the studio, but it initially looks run down and abandoned. He pries open the door, and sees a man in a wheelchair playing the piano. He is the owner of the ballet studio. The owner slowly turns his wheelchair, and laughs humorlessly when Haru asks him about Asami. It is then revealed in a flashback that it was the owner who burned Asami when she was a young child training in his studio. He had also abused her. The owner then stands up and shows Haru that his legs were cut off, and he is now wearing prosthetics, implying that Asami was involved in his amputation. Haru decides to go to the bar, where Asami has said she works. Just like the studio, the bar is closed down. A man tells him that the bar closed a year ago, due to the owner being murdered. He also adds that when the police found the body, there were three extra fingers, and an extra ear and tongue found as well. Haru is so horrified by the story, that he hallucinates the mutilated body parts. Meanwhile, Asami sneaks into Haru's house. She gets angry upon seeing a picture of his dead wife, and drums the liquor in his decanter. After a few hours, he comes home, and pours himself a glass of liquor from the same decanter. His son is staying at a friend's house that night, so he thinks he's alone, not knowing that Asami is hiding somewhere. The drug begins to affect him, and he eventually collapses. Another flashback reveals that during one of their dates, Asami shared that she was sent to live with her uncle in the aftermath of her parents' divorce. She was physically abused by his uncle's wife, and was even pushed down the stairs. After a doctor guessed that she was being abused, she was sent back to her mother's house. But her mother married another man who was an abuser as well. While under the influence of the drugs, the flashbacks melt into a surreal dream, where he and Asami are eating in a restaurant. She shares that Bale helped her cope with her painful past, and that it purified her dark side. 
Suddenly, Haru sees his dead wife and the younger version of his son sitting at the next table. He introduces her to Asami, but his wife tells him that she isn't good for him. Another dream starts. This time, Haru is in Asami's apartment, as she appears and kneels in front of him to pleasure him. He refuses her advances, and she turns into his secretary, who tells him that after they slept together, she expected that he would want to be in a relationship with her, but he didn't and tries to run away from her. She later turns into his son's crush, but he subconsciously tried to ignore that at the beginning when the son brought her home. Right then, the girl disappears, and Haru notices a large sack at the end of the hallway. The sack moves, and a naked man emerges. His legs are stumps, and his ear, three fingers, and tongue are missing. This is heavily implied to be the man, whose body parts were found with the body of the club owner, and the man is probably someone from Asami's past. The naked man begs for food, and Asami vomits into a dog bowl, and he eats it. Haru then imagines that Asami goes back to the ballet studio, to decapitate the owner with a wire. He then wakes up paralyzed on the floor of his study. Asami is wearing leather gloves and an apron, and she fills a syringe with more paralytic drugs. She sticks the needle into his tongue, so he can be paralyzed, while still feeling the pain she will inflict on him. She pulls out several acupuncture needles, and sticks them one by one to torture him. While doing this, she explains that he is a liar, because he said he will love only her. But the truth is that he loves his son and his dead wife, and she will not tolerate that. She then brandishes the same wire he saw in his dream, and saws off his foot slowly. The son suddenly returns home, and stumbles upon his father. Asami comes up behind him, holding a spray. Haru wakes up, and he is suddenly back at the seaside hotel, where he stayed with Asami previously. But this time, Asami is sleeping beside him, and both of his feet are still intact. She accepts his marriage proposal, and snuggles up to him in bed. He closes his eyes, and drifts off to sleep. At this point, it is apparent that Haru is an unreliable narrator, and that his subconscious and reality can often blur together, with many events taking place in a messy time order, possibly because of his being drugged and the endless torture by Asami for a long time. Therefore, his perspective of Asami throughout the film, swings from one extreme to the other. She is either a submissive and innocent girl who can be the perfect wife, or a crazy love-obsessed woman. He believes that Asami's abusive childhood made her into a killer. Tired of being the victim, she enacts revenge on the men in her life, who took advantage of her, starting with the ballet studio owner who molested her. He is now back at home again, and his son is fighting Asami, after finding the father bleeding out. The son runs up the stairs, and Asami chases him, but kicks her downstairs and she breaks her neck. The son calls the police, and the movie ends as Haru lies on the floor and stares at a dying Asami, who repeats what she said during one of their dates, about being excited to see him again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.